So now it's processor time. This phone is a beast with the specs that it has. It has the S4 Pro processor, that's the CPU, and for the GPU you have the Adreno 320, which is a really good GPU, especially for 3D graphics during gameplay. I wanna talk about some of the benchmarks that I'm finding and what other reviewers are finding. And there's something that people are noticing and something that I think should be brought to attention that other reviewers I haven't seen talking too much about is the CPU and GPU throttling. So basically that means that when the phone reaches a certain temperature, just say you're playing a game, the GPU speed will kind of start to drop when it gets to be a certain temperature. Same thing with the CPU. So that affects gameplay, whereas you're playing a really smooth game. Granny Smith is a really po fun, popular game that I play all the time. And I notice that it's going really smooth, but then all of a sudden you're gonna see sometimes a sudden drop in frame rates where it doesn't look so smooth. And that is the GPU throttling in action right there. So let's check out to see whether that's something that will really bother you or not. What we're going to do now is actually go ahead and take a look at the thermal configuration file for this device. So here is the FX. This is a file explorer. You need to have a rooted device in order to do and look at and edit what I am going to touch. Don't edit this file. I am going to show you. Don't do it. Don't do it. We go FX. We're going to go to System. We're going to go to Etc. Then we're going to scroll down. And you can see that there is a file called thermald.config. We're going to go ahead and open that up. Now I'm going to actually put this into a file editor so that we can see this in a better form. So now we are in thermald.config inside the text editor. What I must say, and this is why I was warning before, if inside the text editor you can edit anything in here and save it and the whole system will actually honor the changes that you've made. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't change this. I'm going to be showing you in Thermal D all the way down at the bottom actually the lines of code here that have to do with the actual throttling of the device that Google has put in place. If you wanted to, you could take away all the thermal throttling by deleting bat underscore therm. Don't do this. There are several reasons I feel that Google has actually put this in place. A lot of it has to do, I think, with preserving battery life, because without that, I think the battery life would be trash. If you edit anything else, I feel that you could actually brick your device if the system honors it and you get some numbers wrong. So again, don't do this. Google has put bat.therm there for a reason. I do not think you should be editing this and taking away the throttling, or you could end up with many other problems with your phone, okay? Okay. So as I was showing you earlier under battery level, you can see it's now at 27.4 degrees Celsius. This area right here, bat.therm, actually is reading from the exact same sensor that's near or around the battery. And I actually want to explain what's going on in here so that you can understand why it's throttling and why CPU throttling isn't as bad as the GPU throttling, which we're really going to get into. I will show you with Need for Speed. That's one of my favorite games. So we're going to be looking at several lines here. We're going to be starting with thresholds and thresholds clear. So this is actually talking about temperature. So this is 36 degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Celsius, 38 degrees Celsius, and 39 degrees Celsius. You're going further and further up inside this configuration file here. Don't mind that these numbers aren't as you would expect to see them. It's just how the system reads it. Below it says thresholds clear, which basically means if you hit 36 degrees Celsius, this whole line is going to apply until you go below 35 degrees Celsius. So this is the initialization of the threshold, and this is what ends up exiting out of this threshold. Then you see here, this is actions. We've got CPU, GPU, LCD, and battery. We're going to be talking about these a little bit later on, but you can see that they actually correspond downwards. So CPU, you've got 1.5 gigahertz. Again, don't mind what the form is. GPU, you've got a max of 400 megahertz. LCD, this is actually going to be the backlight power. And battery, we're going to discuss later as well. So let's take a look at what's going on with the throttling here. Look at CPU. You can see that it says 1.5 gigahertz. Now you start getting some throttling at 37 degrees Celsius. Look, you can actually see a change here. It goes from 1.5 gigahertz down to 1.2 gigahertz. It stays 1.2 gigahertz at 38 degrees Celsius. 
And then when you hit 39 degrees Celsius, this line of code here automatically tells the phone to start doing full throttle. It drops the CPU frequency down to 1.1 gigahertz. You can see it stays 1.1 gigahertz all the way down through here. So when I said that the CPU throttling is not that bad, 1.1 gigahertz is not a bad speed at all. It's not a bad frequency. You can see that this is the lowest frequency that you're going to be getting. So in general use of the system, even if it's fully throttled, it's not much of a problem, not really at all. Nantic did some results, and I think it actually ends up looking at full throttle, something like the last generation processor, the S4, that was the dual core, not the S4 Pro. You see that like in the HTC One X or the American Galaxy S3. Keep in mind that this is the Qualcomm HTC One X and not the Tegra version. So again, CPU, it's really not a worry at all in general use, and that's how I know. But what you end up actually having trouble with is the GPU. This is something that I advise if you're somebody who plays hours and hours of gameplay, you might want to check out a different phone. But for someone like me who doesn't play for hours and hours, it should be fine. I was saying before that it took about a half hour to get to full throttle. I'm not going to be honestly playing games for more than a half hour, so that gives you an idea. And here is what's happening with the GPU. What you have here is it says 400 megahertz. That is a very nice GPU score. You can see that at 37 degrees Celsius, you start going down to 325 megahertz. It stays 325 megahertz at 38 degrees Celsius. Once you hit 39 degrees Celsius, you're getting 200 megahertz. Ouch. That means that you're staying at, once you hit 39 degrees, you are staying at half the frequency speed. So what does that mean? That means you're probably going to be getting half the frame rate. I don't want to freak anybody out. We're going to be doing a real test with Need for Speed when this is fully throttled. So you can see what half frame rate looks like. For me, I'm not very sensitive to frame rates. It's still entirely playable. Probably people won't really notice. So that's why it's good to show you this and good to also show you the real world examples. So if you're somebody who's playing for like 15 minutes, you're probably going to be getting a little bit of throttling here. It's about 23% in frame rate drop, which is really not that bad. But if you're a heavy, 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 heavy gamer, you're going to be staying at 200 megahertz until you reach, this is why this is important, threshold clears, until your internal temperature drops below 36 degrees Celsius, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the full 400 megahertz again. That's why thresholds clear is important because it's telling you at what temperature you need the phone to be at in order to take advantage of the full speed. So full speed of this phone is at 36 degrees Celsius and below. Once you start getting above to 37 degrees, you start getting a little bit of throttling and you will not exit this command to throttle until you hit the clear. So keep in mind, in order to have full speed of this phone, you need to have it at below 36 degrees Celsius. So here we are at full throttle again. You can see that the battery temperature is 42.1 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be running Need for Speed Most Wanted. Now this is a game that I really like to play and I kind of chose this particular game because it's one that I have a hard time seeing at full frame. It's supposed to be playing at 30 frames per second, but I haven't really seen it reach that except for maybe on the iPhone, iPhone 5 actually. So you can see now that fully throttled what it looks like dropping frame rates. Now don't bash my driving skills. You can see here that it looks fairly smooth. I know that I'm dropping several frames here. So with the GPU throttling, you're probably dropping anywhere from about half frames per second. It can be less than that. At some points I can see that I'm almost hitting 30 frames per second. It's doing a pretty good job overall. But in some places it kind of just looks choppy. Whoa, take down. So I think that the biggest problem is just the stuttering that you can see with the frame rates. But again, if you're someone who's not all that sensitive to frame rates dropping, you're probably going to be feeling just fine with this. It is still entirely playable, but it's just not as pretty as it could be. Oh, there you can see that there was some nice frame drops there. Get out of my way! 
If you're still not convinced about the throttling and you want to see something that's overly exaggerated, go ahead and use something like GL Benchmark, like I had mentioned before. We're going to be doing the Egypt HD stress test. Actually, it's like a game emulation. You don't have to do anything. It just plays on the screen. This is a very graphic intensive game with all kinds of geometrical shapes and a lot of triangle fill is going to be needed for this. As a result, you end up stressing the heck out of the phone because the games in the Android market are not quite like this. So right now you can see that we are at 35. We are below throttle, so I'm going to go ahead and push start and let you see what that looks like at a pretty decent frame rate. This phone does pretty awesome with this, with the Adreno 320. Now testing this on something like the Galaxy Note 2, you get really, really slow speeds because the Mali 400 is just not capable of dealing with such geometrical shapes and 3D objects that are going on in here. So you can see how nice and smooth this actually appears right now. Check out that frame rate. So you can see that it's at 42 frames per second, which is actually pretty impressive. The iPhone 5 gets about the same on this benchmark test. But once you start throttling, these frame rates start dropping drastically. Let me show you this. So you can see here now it says 41 frames per second, which is not bad at all. It was at about 37 degrees Celsius. So that's already starting to kick in throttling. We're going to go over again. See that it's dropping to 40 frames per second, and that's still at 37. It's not going to be throttling fully until you reach 39 degrees Celsius. Then at 47.2 degrees Celsius, check that out. It's already gone all the way down to 29 frames per second. That's dropping 10 frames per second. So there you are. This is a massive stress test in the real world. Again, games in the Android market really are not this intensive in terms of 3D graphical rendering, but this is the extreme. And you can see that during this, it's dropping quite a few frames. Overall, I think it's up to you to decide whether you're able to handle something that's dropping frame rates, especially if you're going to be playing games for hours on end. Unless you reach below 36 degrees Celsius, you're not going to be seeing that full frame rate again. So maybe this phone is more equipped for people who don't play for more than 30 minutes. That's just how I see it. In the real world, yes, this is annoying, but for the majority, I don't think this is going to be too bad. But this just may not be the power horse that you were expecting.